so hope you guys don't mind the uh, nature of these videos where I'm just kind of explaining things, but I get a lot of questions almost every day, and I keep on typing these answers out, but I think, you know, if I just make a video about it, maybe I can just answer the question easier that way. One of the reasons that the videos are like this instead of outside underneath the truck is that it's like 10 degrees here, and it's way too cold to be doing that stuff. But fear not, Dad got a uh, new carburetor ordered for it, so we're going to try to fix that issue, and uh, hopefully it warms up enough for us to, you know, get a camera outside and do some stuff with the truck again soon. So the videos won't all be like this forever, but I figured why not? If people are asking questions, then I might as well make little videos to just answer those questions in the future when somebody else has the same question, because who's going to scroll through all the comments and read whatever random question happened, right? So today I'm going to uh, talk about the transmission fluid issue. I mentioned in the road trip video about the F-Type transmission and why I had to have it, and people wanted some elaboration on that, so let's first address what it is that you have if you have a C6 transmission, where that comes from, and why that's different from what's out today. Okay, so in the 1940s, Ford was a little bit late in the automatic transmission game, and they basically bought slash borrowed the Borg Warner design for a three-speed automatic transmission and called it good. This transmission is commonly known as the Ford-O-Matic. By the 1950s, though, cars were getting bigger and faster, and this old design just wasn't cutting the mustard. So in 1958, they introduced a new, beefier automatic transmission called the Cruise-O-Matic. These transmissions were based heavily on the previous ford matic which was basically used as a template when developing the new transmission. And in fact, many of the gear sets are even interchangeable between the cruise matic and the ford matic And this new ford matic was divided into two different models, the smaller FX model for lighter weight applications, and the heavier duty MX that was slapped onto the bigger engines for heavy duty applications. The MX slash FX combo was in production right up until 1964, before ultimately being more or less replaced by the C4. Then there's the completely bastard child of the entire thing, the FMX. It was essentially a marriage of the best aspects of the MX and FX into a single hybrid. And this transmission was fairly short-lived in the United States, but it was produced for a little bit longer period for uh, various foreign markets such as Australia. You know, where they made the last of the V8s. Of course, this all gave way eventually to the C4 and the C6. Oh, how do I know whether I have a C4 or C6, you might ask? Well, just crawl underneath the thing and uh, look up at the oil pan. If it's pretty much square, then you have a C4. And if it's shaped kind of like a sloppily drawn Utah, it's a C6. It's that easy. And the C4 was the first Ford transmission made from aluminum in an effort to cut down on the weight without losing out on strength and durability as uh, the ford matic was a seriously heavy beast. Now, there for a while, the C4 was used in lighter duty applications while the FMX was used in the heavier duty applications. And this was up until the introduction of the super heavy duty C6 transmission. Compared with the FMX, the C6 offered lower weight, less complexity, less parasitic power loss, and greater torque capacity for larger engines, and all in exactly the same size package. Can't beat that shit. Well, why the hell would I ever want a C4 then, you might ask? Maybe you don't have an ungodly torque machine hooked up to it, for one. Uh, another reason is that uh, modified versions of the C4 remain really popular with hot rodders because they're simple and durable, and their bell housings are more or less interchangeable. So that means you can feasibly hook up your C4 to whatever engine you have. The C6, on the other hand, comes in five different bell housings. The Windsor, the Cleveland, the FE, the MEL 462, and the Diesel, if you're into that sort of thing. And what you have is pretty much what you've got. Sorry. Now after this, you get into the modern transmissions. In the 80s, you got like automatic overdrive, four-speed transmissions, and I think they were the last transmission that was made that wasn't controlled by a computer and pretty much the last thing that you can hook to the V8s like this, but or the big block V8s or whatever, but I'm not familiar with them at all. But that's like a rundown of the old Ford transmissions, uh, the old, you know, the stuff that you're into if you're into the stuff that I'm into. So, past the C6, I'm not sure what came or went, and uh, I've never read about it or messed with it, so that's pretty much a breakdown of the history of old Ford transmissions. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we can talk about the different kinds of transmission fluid, what they're for, 
and uh, why F-Type is really what you should go with on this if you have the same truck transmission combo that I have. Okay, so what the hell is automatic transmission fluid? Basically, it's just slippery fluid that's optimized for the special requirements of a transmission. Different factors such as valve operation, brake band friction, and the torque converter are taken into consideration when formulating ATF as well as just having the basic function of being a general gear lubrication. Now, modern transmission fluid typically contains a wide variety of chemical compounds intended to provide the specific properties for a particular transmission specification. These different chemical compounds include various anti-wear additives, rust and corrosion inhibitors, detergents, dispersants, anti-foam additives, anti-oxidation compounds, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so what? What the hell's the big difference? The answer to that is friction modifiers and whether or not you need them. A really basic breakdown of the ATF that you see on the shelf at the auto parts store goes like this. ATF plus four is for Dodge, Jeep, and Chrysler stuff. Mercon five is for most Ford, Lincoln, Mercury operations. Dexron six is for all that shitty GM stuff that you probably shouldn't be driving. And most of the other weird stuff is for Japanese cars and if you need it, really, you're on the wrong video. Seriously. However, if you have a big C6 sitting underneath your cab like I do, none of these should be on your shopping list at all because you need F-type transmission fluid. Wait, what the fuck? Why? What's the difference? What will happen if I just dump some Merker Dex ATF into my C6, you might ask? Because it's the only thing at the gas station and I'm leaking. Well, the most noticeable difference will be that F-type ATF gives you firmer shifts and much less slippage. The main difference really has to do with uh, the friction on the clutch. The DEX slash Mercon is for modern transmissions, and of course DEX also happens to be backwards compatible with all the older GM stuff that use different types of DEX, like DEX 2 and DEX 3 and all that. Unfortunately, and of course, it doesn't work the same way for us Ford guys, because it has to be more complicated. Mercon is not simply backwards compatible in something that calls for F-type transmission fluid. In essence, from what I understand anyway, DEX and Merc are generally just a friction modified version of F-Type, and as a result, these old Ford trannies, especially if not recently rebuilt, are just going to operate much more properly with F-Type, keeping all the shifts firm and hard rather than loose. And most generally with these things, you actually want harder shifts, even if it sounds counterintuitive because incidentally this is also the primary function of a shift kit. To confuse the matter even further, some of the newer C6 transmissions, like found in trucks from 1977 and up, might even have Dex or Merc or something like that stamped on the dipstick. And from what I've read, you can use Dex or Merc in these and expect things to work, more or less, but you can expect it to work way better with F-Type. In fact, if you look up the product info on almost any Dexron or Merc on fluid, you'll almost always read a passage somewhere that says it is definitely not intended for transmissions that call for an F-type fluid, which most of ours do. Okay, there you have it. So that's the basics of the transmission and the type of fluid you should have in it. So now you've been warned and slightly loosely informed and you can make your own decision, but mine gets F-type. Thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoy these things. Also, I had been encouraged recently to do some social media pages, so if you look down below, there's links to uh, the Twitter if you want to send me like a specific question or insult, and uh, there's also a Facebook page now where you can feel free to post pictures or tips or whatever of your own build. Um, I've got like several hundred pictures of both my motorcycle and truck builds on that Facebook page now, so feel free to go in and uh, add to that or, you know, hit me up on either one, and they'll get checked pretty much every day. So, uh, again, thanks a lot for watching, and I uh, hope this was useful in any way.